You're close. Okay. And this is about awareness. There's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. It's about aware, awareness. So at Keller Williams, what we learn, and we're gonna have some triangles today. What, what runs our business? What are the three sides of the triangle? Seeds, that's the first one. What's the second one? <laughs> Listings. And what's the last one? Sorry, my handwriting is terrible. <laughs> Right. Thank you. So we earn the right for leverage through first needs, then listing, right? Then the lever goes down. Okay, so I coach agents, I coach MER agents, and I have MREA agents. And I have to go with this with everyone, so don't be insulted. What are the five money making jobs? of a real estate agent in the order that Gary Keller wrote them in 1978. Negotiating offers. What's the first one? Agent. 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 Nope. The first one. Goal setting. Nope. <laughs> You're gonna be surprised. I used to put this last. And then one of our coaches found Gary's original document. There's two of them. Gary has one and this coach has one. I'll write it down for you. It all starts there. What to say, when to say it, and how to say it. What comes next, Sam? What did I say? I forgot already. <laughs> Come on now. What comes Oh, negotiating offers. No. <laughs> what do we do after we practice our scripts? At 8 30, at 9 o'clock, we do. Oh, Ryan right. said that, not me. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that? I'll take for someone. Again, these are the five money making activities of a real estate agent. So, what do you think number three is? We need follow up. <laughs> Making sense? And what's the fourth one? Appointments. Going on appointments. Which leads us to Sam. Negotiating off. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so anything other than these five things can be leveraged. None of these five things can be leveraged. Did you hear me? Everything, this is so important because my client, my coaching clients, they, they always try to leverage lead gen. I'm like, no. So script practice, lead gen, lead follow-up, going on appointments and negotiating contracts. Those are our five jobs. So, um, I have a little, it's not, I'm not quite like Sean, but I do my paper bigger than Sean's. But um, so a lot of things, a lot of times what I hear from my clients is, oh my gosh, I have to learn how to manage my time. Can you manage time or does it keep clicking? <laughs> so who, what do you have to manage? What you do with the time, right? Yourself. So we don't manage time, we manage ourselves. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you, and this is uh, an exercise I go through. I'm gonna do another triangle here. And you should probably write this down. And in the middle, I'm gonna put results. Let's spell it right. So we have a triangle with results in the middle. So I asked you who has 25% of their goal pending or closed. No one had their hand up high. May, uh, Morgan had her hand up a little bit, but not up high. Nothing wrong with that. But when that happens, because it's February almost the 15th, which is the day, right? What is it we have to ask ourselves? Why? <laughs> yeah. So this is what I call, this is called 
This is called the success triangle. And results is in the middle. So we're going to talk about the foundation, which would be this. What is the foundation of the success triangle? It's not a trick question. There's three things that hold up the triangle. What do you think they might be? That's a, an idea. That's not quite what I'm looking for. Pardon? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's great, but that's not what I'm looking for. Time management. Did you say time management? We don't manage time, we manage ourselves. Just to know why. Just to know why. why Strong I, why. why that I fuels mean. our goal. Oh, okay. That fuels our goal, absolutely. <laughs> What's 80% of success? Yep. So when we're not getting the results that we want, we ask ourselves, what's going on up here? What are we saying to ourselves? How are we holding ourselves back? What's going on up here? What do we need to change to change the results we're getting? The second part is um, um, the last one is activities. Are we doing the right activities to get the results we want? So who in here tracks their numbers? Fantastic. How many? Okay. So the thing about numbers, so it shows you where your gaps are, right? Where's your gap? When you have, so if you have, go off on a tangent for a minute. So if you're making, I'll just make up numbers here. If you're making a hundred contacts a week, and what's a contact? Two-way conversation, right? By phone, text, email, Facebook Messenger, Whatever, WhatsApp, whatever that might be. And, and then how many opportunities are you uncovering, which is your pipeline, right? Opportunities are people you can add to your pipeline. And then how many leads did you get that make an appointment, right? What's an appointment? Here's how I define an appointment. Appointment is when you go to meet with Jill, and you're taking either a listing agreement with you or a buyer agent agreement with you and expecting to have Jill sign it. It's not a walkthrough. It's not a, I want to buy a house next year. Can we talk about it? It's an actual occurrence where you're face to face with a customer who, who you are taking paperwork and expecting it to get signed. Does that make sense? Because a lot of times we cheat ourselves by counting appointments that aren't really appointments. I went on five appointments. Well, how many did you get signed? None of them were signable, right? Does that make sense? I'm having a little, um, so numbers, when we track the numbers, numbers give you the evidence. of the activities and your commitments. I'm gonna open the window. Is anybody else warm or is it just me? Okay. It's usually just me. Okay, so the only way that we know if we're doing the right, right activities is if the activities that we're doing are getting us the results we want. Otherwise, you're not doing the right things. You can head in the wrong direction as fast as you want and you won't get there. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is my favorite. So I coach a lot of teams. And teams for the past three years, have they had to work a lot on their skill set or have they just been like writing offers, especially buyer agents, right? They're just writing offers. We're just 
listing houses, getting them sold. Now we are in a skill set market. Well, what do I mean by skill set? What's it mean to you, Jill? Um, you kind of have to know what you're talking about, how to negotiate, like pull your tools out instead of just like, yay, we won. Yeah, what else? What skill set mean to someone else here? Know, know your scripts. Well, I guess I That's right. Spontaneity is a conditioned reflex, right? Knowing what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. Skill set, right? And also, and I don't know if you've taken, um, who in here has taken language of sales? Yeah, it's, it's the best thing that you can take ever. So it's a little piece of neuro-linguistic programming, but it teaches you how to, the whole premise behind language of skills and neuro linguistic programming is helping people communicating with people in an effective way to help them get what they want okay not what we want them to have it's about helping them get what they want does that make sense and how do we know what people want listening but what to listen what do we have to do Ask, questions. ask great questions ask great questions right <laughs> so when you go into a listing appointment do do people want to hear you blah 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 and vomit all about yourself or do they want you to say um sharon tell me why did you call me to talk about selling your house just play with me heard you were the best very great well when you sell well what's going to happen what are you going to do uh Make some money. Right. When what are you going to do with the money? <laughs> Buy my next investment property. Buy your next investment property. And what does that mean to you? Make more money. Right. So do you see how I'm just going deep, 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 deep? So a, a normal conversation, because Sharon's not a normal client, right? But um, a normal conversation is, well, we want to move out of state. Fantastic. What's that? What, what state or what's happening in another state? Well, we really want to move to Florida because we want to be with our grandkids. Oh my gosh, well, what's that going to look like when you're in Florida with your grandkids? Well, we're going to spend more time. With them. And see, see how I've gotten them attached to their motivation? And you put that in your put that in your toolbox for later on, right? When you need a price reduction or something, this is what skill set is. This is a skill set, developing effective communication skills to help people get what they want and learning how to reattach them to their motivation. And if we don't ask questions at our listing presentation or our buyer consultation, we don't know what their motivation is. Because their motivation, I promise you this, is not for you to make money. <laughs> no. It really isn't. It, so we have to understand what it is they want and what it means to them. And you know what people will say when you ask them a bunch of questions? That was the most interesting conversation I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, because they're talking about themselves, right? <laughs> I, it's funny, I got a call, like I was leaving for Mexico last Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Of course, I get a call on Friday. Hi, this is so-and-so. I want to sell my house on South Woodland. Um, I live in Shaker, or I don't live in Shaker. I work a lot in Shaker. I just moved to Pepper Pike, that's right. Um, and um, so I said, okay, that's fantastic. I'm leaving for Mexico in the morning. May I come today? Oh, today. And, you know, so I went today and I, I went that day at four o'clock and I just asked them question after question after question after, and they, you know, they were just so interested in sharing all of it with me. And then when I said, so are you ready to put me to work? They said, well, we have appointments with two other realtors. So I tried the normal thing. I'm happy to cancel those appointments for you. You know, but, but they didn't, they didn't want to do that, you know, and that's okay. I said, here's what we're going to do. Cause you're, you know, I'm going to come here. I'm getting back on Saturday from Mexico. I'll be here Sunday at two o'clock and we'll sign off the paperwork. How does that sound? Okay, great. So I texted him from Cozumel on Friday. I'm like, I'm, um, you know, I'm confirming our appointment on Sunday at two. They said, yes. 
And so I went there at two and they, and I said, so are we working together? Is that why I'm here? Yes. Right. So we get the paperwork signed and, and we're on our way. It's going to be a while before that comes on. So a lot of work to do. But the point is what they told me was nobody else was really interested in them. And ask the questions. Right. Have you ever have you ever seen have you ever heard real estate agents talk? Well, I am number number one and number two and number four and nobody cares. Okay. Nobody cares. They don't know what it means. What they want to know is what you can do for them. Okay. And what is what do sellers want? Dave Jinx. They All want to know the price. No, we don't tell them that one's fine. But they want it, they want so it's the most possible, amount of money. Money as possible for each as possible. And the least amount of time, time, right? time with the least the of least of inconvenience to them. That's all they want. So it's our job to use our effective communication, which we learn at script practice. And there's a lot of opportunity at KW for professional script practice. Because if you're practicing bad scripts, you're practicing bad scripts, right? Maps on the maps coaching page, there's recon. There's um, the cyber backers do um, game room. Chris Hurley um, does Jedi uh, script practice. He's out of South Carolina. He's great. These are professional script practices. And they're, they're strategic to the market because we're always in a different market. It's never the same market, right? The same scripts don't work in each market. Okay. So for those of you in the room who are not seeing the results you want right now, what is it? Is it mindset? Is it skill set? Is it activities? Or is it like a lot of my clients say, Terry, I think it's a little bit of all three. But we can identify where we need to place our focus. Focus is the, is the real, real word here. Focus and execution, right? Right, Art? Okay, so what holds up the triangle? What do you think holds this up, the foundation? Yeah, that's the foundation. I'm just going to tell you. It's a schedule and following your calendar. Isn't that boring? <laughs> How many of you have, I'm just going to make it, you know, simplify this. How many of you have one time block? each day that you absolutely protect like it's a hair appointment. <laughs> oh, I was going to say hair appointment. That's a pretty important. <laughs> oh, no, I That's know. a very important time. Do you? I mean, I get to the gym first thing every morning. Okay. Exercise. Okay, that's fantastic. If I do that, everything else is going to go well. And Gary Keller tells us all the time, if you win your morning and win your day, right? It's on page... 306 of MREA, the energy. I saw it up in the on the counter in the lunchroom too, you know, is so I'm looking for a time block for lead gen or database calls. You know, anybody have that? You do? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And do you protect it like, yes. like a hair appointment? Yes. Yeah. And for men, I've learned it's a golf time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Women. <laughs> yeah, I ask like. You know, like for me, when I was, you know, um, coming up in the business, for me, it was my son's football games. There is nothing that would have held me back from going to my son's football game. I'm sorry, I have an appointment. You know, those are the words that we need to learn to say. I have an appointment. How is 11? How is one? How is two? Does that make sense? So that is how you follow a schedule. And I recommend all of you read the one thing. I read it again, I've read it a few times, but I read it on New Year's Day because it's not a long read. But it just brought back to me because I'm a squirrel. I mean, I can squirrel at anything and we're all kind of like that. You know, and when we do that, 
which is why we came up with time blocks, right? Is you're doing one thing over and over and over and over. Because guess how much time it costs you to switch tasks? 28% of the day. That's a lot. So if you have if you have lead gen time from nine to eleven, and so you're making a call and then checking your email, you lost twenty eight percent of that two hours. So it just goes on endlessly because you're not going to get the result because you're spending twenty eight percent of your time squirreling. And one thing I learned my first coach, his name was Tony Caliendo from Maps. Um, he said, you know, you you agents all you all think you're like you just like that you can solve the world's problems. Listen, Terry, what I'm going to tell you is no one's going to die if you don't call them till after 11 o'clock. And I've kind of added to that. There are no emergencies in real estate. None. If there's an emergency, they should call 911. Right? There's no emergencies. The title company doesn't have to earn us money. That can wait till 11. You know, this doesn't this person wants this right now from eight to eleven. So does that make sense? Yeah. I think a lot of us we want to be distracted to do something. Hundred sure. percent. Sure. That is us sta standing in our own way. Oh my god, there's a time company. I better stop making my calls. Get that over to the title company. No, we want to do it, right? But I've seen this over and over. You know, as I as I coach people, when they, when they get going and they see the results that they're getting from the time block, they can't wait to get to their time block and no one can stop them, right? You have to get there in your, back to this. And also what I've learned, especially in the past six months as the market changed, right? Is when people are improving their skill set, guess what happens? Confidence, yep. right? Because you're going in a room and you're like, I know what to say. And guess what else you're doing better? When you know what to say, what else are you doing better on an appointment? Listening. Because you're not thinking, oh my God, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? What am I say? No, you become a better listener, right? So when, when Jude says to me, well, Terry, um, you know, I'm, I want 500000 and if I don't get 500,000, I'm not gonna sell my house. So what do I say? Jude, because it's my skill set level. Jude, I heard you say that if you don't get $500,000 for cash, you don't wanna sell it. Is that what I heard you say? A lot of times I say, well, I don't mean that. <laughs> right? But what did I do? I repeated their exact words. And they're either gonna say, yep, I want 500 or I'm not doing anything, but I said, well, I didn't really mean that. And then that leads to a further discussion. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if they want 500,000 and their house is worth 400,000, am I going to list that house? No. Hell no. Not on that. Sorry, it's for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, I'm not. You know, and that's why it's important to, for them to hear what they said. What I heard you say is. That's a very simple skill set. Okay, so now we're going to look at the other side of the triangle. What do you think this is? Activities. Activities are the foundation. Yeah, I'll just tell you. Standards. I know you can't read my writing. So at standards, what standards do you have for yourself? Are they written down? Did you sign them? What are your standards? Do people, do, does everybody know what their standards are? And this is really big. Expectations for yourself and your team. So does anybody run a team in here? Yeah, so if you have a team, do they have clear standards? 
and are they being enforced? And if they're not being enforced, are they really standards? They're not, by the way. That means you have no standards. And ex expectations, you know, and we, and, and we do, you know, especially when we're solo agents, we have to have expectations for ourselves. What, is everybody okay? Is this too cold? I, I think it feels great. But yeah, so we have to have expectations for ourselves and for our team. And when we have expectations, what do we have to do? We have to inspect what we expect. So how do we do that as agents? How do we do that as team leaders? And when, team, when I say team leader, I mean like our running a team. So if you open, if you open your booklet, there should be a GPS in there. Is there? So this is the time. So all of my coaching clients, let me see what time it is. Okay. So all every single one of my coaching clients in October, we start a conversation. What is your life by design? What are your um, what is a life by design by the way? What do you want in your life? Yeah. How many investment properties you want to buy? How many trips do you want to go on? Blah, blah, blah. What are your business expenses? Because all my clients have a profit and loss statement. So they know what their expenses are. And what are their living expenses? So the business expenses and the living expenses are, are, are what I call floating your boat. What do you have to have to float your boat? Right? So you don't sink. But the magics in the life by design are worse. So when you go into business planning, which we do after we fill out our life by design, and you go into business planning and you do your models, your economic model, your budget model, and your lead gen model, then you know exactly what you have to do to get what you want. Right? And so everything, and at max, we turn everything into units. Okay, so if you want to earn, let's say um, one of my clients said, I want to earn $405,000. I don't know why four hundred and five. that's what she wanted. So that's what we did. So then we take her average sale price, blah, 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 blah. We do the economic model, right? So then she knows how many units she has to close. And when do they need to close? By the end of 2023. So if, well, on your GPS, where it says goal, your goal could be, I want to close 24 units in 2023. Is that specific? Mm -hmm. Is it measurable? Mm -hmm. Is it attainable? Mm -hmm. And is it time bound? Yeah, it's all of those things. That's called a smart goal, right? So the goal that we have written is very specific. So then if I were to say, can I pick on you, Morgan? Of course. Okay, thank you. I know Morgan, so so if I say, and this is what I do with my coaching clients. Okay, Morgan, what's your goal number? Fourteen million. What What's your unit number? Forty. Forty-two. Okay. I think forty-two. Okay. Well, let's just go with that. Okay. So here's what I say to my client. Okay, Morgan, you're closing forty-two units in 2023. Is that right? Yes. So Morgan, to close 23 to you, 42 units in 2023, what is your number one priority? Mindset and lead gen. Nope. No. That's not specific. If I, no, I, I'm picking oh. her because she can take it. But no, here's, here's, and I go through this with my coach oh, clients no. too. Morgan, what do you have to do to close 42 units this year? They go on a certain number of appointments. Bingo! <laughs> Do we close units without going on appointments? No. So then we know, so we're tracking our numbers, right? So we know how many, how many contacts do we have to make to get an appointment that's paper in the bag to sign appointment. So how many appointments does Morgan need to go on? That's not an acceptable I know, answer. But, I don't remember. but no, we know that number. Okay, and Gary's telling us to use 
even if at, you're at 80 percent, he's saying to use 80, 50 percent of the share. So Morgan, on your priority number one, Morgan is going on 84 appointments this year. And then we break it down. How many is that a month? How many is that okay. that's a week, blah, blah, blah. So here's the next question you ask yourself. And I'm, should I pick on someone else? Or are you okay? No, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. <laughs> keep going. But this is what the conversation <laughs> that I have with my clients on Zoom, they don't get like, phone, the, we're on yeah. Zoom. Right. So Morgan, we need to go on 84 appointments this year. Tell me, what are you going to do to make that happen? If your life depended on it, Morgan, and you had to make 84 appointments this year, what would you do? Leave gender. You, okay. You would call people. Yes. So that's her number one priority. Call people. How many people? Oh, then we get specific, oh. right? How many people are we going to call every week? What else would you do? What else would I do? Write notes to people, social, obviously. That's the easiest touch you can do. Door knock. Some people door knock, some people don't. So you ask yourself, what am I good at? What brings me results? What, are, what am I good at and what brings me success? It's different for everybody. You know, I have one client, I mean, <laughs> all of her appointments come from church. Every single one. So, I mean, all of her priorities are all around church and she's bringing in the business. So I'm not complaining, but it's not the same for everybody because that's what people want to know. What, well, you know, tell me what works. Well, what works for you? You know, what has brought you success in the past? What has brought you results in the past? Do more of that. I have a client that in North Carolina, they door knock. Every time they door knock, they get like at least two listing appointments. That's their thing. You know, I've never door knocked in my entire life, you know, and have, has anybody read the book, um, what's it called? It's by Jeb Blount, help me out here, um, Fanatical Prospecting, yeah, Fanatical Prospecting, so it's that you prospect all the time, no matter where you are or what you're doing, right? If you're at the hair salon, the grocery store, I sold a house last year to the, my favorite checkout girl at Heinen's, I that. <laughs> you know, I mean, cause she, you know, cause you have this, I say, you know, I say my personality is going to be different than Sharon's and everybody's different. But, you know, if I meet someone new and I say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm a realtor. So I have to ask, where do you live? Cause that's a big thing in Cleveland. Like, I don't know why, but it, in Cleveland, it's a thing. Like, you know, and they're like, oh, you're a realtor. Sometimes I don't even answer the question. Oh, you're, and then they want to talk about real estate. Did I go up with realtor breath? No, I just asked them a simple question. And that's what's called fanatical prospecting. So we have this GPS. Morgan's probably writing hers now. <laughs> She's had Terry coaching session here. Yeah, so, so, so what is your goal? What is your number one priority? And my clients, I, I don't know if they do it or not, but supposedly they do. They carry their GPS with them all the time. They have them on their desk first thing in the morning. Because when they wake up in the morning, I want them to ask themselves, what's my number one priority today? To go on a listing appointment or to make an appointment. And we can never forget that. We only have one number one priority. I'm passionate. But what do we do? What do most of us do? We get up and we're like, yeah, that's what I want to do today. What do I feel like doing? I mean, that's common, right? But when you, when you, when you have a focus and you have a purpose and another question to ask yourself is what's your commitment level? Is it casual or is it do whatever it takes? That's something only you can answer, right? So has, has this been helpful so far? Mm -hmm. So if I were to, who is going, well, she's already got her started, right? So, so if I were, so let's just assume that everyone in this room 
has as their number one priority going on X amount of appointments. And some of my clients break it down into, um, some of them break it down into weeks, like so many a week, you know, cause we, we track our numbers every week at, at my clients do. Cause I don't want that. If they're off track for a week, we can fix that. A month is hard, right? So, you know, cause the question is, and if you run a team, it's like, what was your goal? How did you do? Where was your gap? What would we do different? It's not rocket science, right? So, so if I were to ask people in this room for ideas, like if your number one priority is to go on 50 appointments, listing or buying, whatever they are, what would you know? What would what your strategy be? Morgan already said phone calling, um, being out and about with people, social events. What else did you say? I also wrote notes, like thank you notes. Oh, or... thank you. Writing notes, absolutely. Any other ideas in the room? What are you really good at? <clears throat> Contacting past clients. Calling past clients, absolutely. <clears throat> That's called DTD2. Everybody know what that is? And does everyone here have a 36 touch? You're touching your clients 36 times a year? Yep. Perfect. Because that's usually on the strategy. What else? What else has worked for some of you? Jade, you're up and going. What are you doing well? I mean, I have a zone you call events. Events. I love events. Yeah. And events don't have to be expensive either. The beautiful thing about events is it's not important how many people come, it's how many touches you can make about the event. And if I call you Jill and I say, hey, this is Terry, I'm having a happy hour in a couple weeks. Um, and let's just say you can't go. But how did you feel when I called you and invited you? I was excited. Yeah, you're like, and oh, I was like, who can I bring? Right? I mean, you make someone feel good. People remember how you make them feel. They don't remember what you, what you say. They remember how you make them feel, right? So if you call someone, even if they can't make it to your event, you still made that touch. Does that make sense? So that's the beauty of an event. What else? Partnerships, like the loan officers, the top companies. B to B, business to business. Is that yours? Yeah, in a sense of, but business to business, even expanding that, uh, one of the best contacts I had uh, was uh, when COVID happened, we worked from home. We were great. Got to walk up to Coventry with this coffee and got to know the baristas. And all they said to me is, oh, I hope people come in because if we have to close down. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. So I was there every day for a break to do it. Guess what? Barista there referred me to a friend of her mom's. Some of the some of the best sales I got that year. So just the people we regularly do business with. Yeah, and that's that's exactly right. And events are really cool. Like one of my clients did her first event. She did a Santa event, and she just had a Santa Claus and some cookie. She's Mexican, so she had like Mexican candy, and people just came in with a photo with Santa. I think she got seven pieces of business from that. Seven. And from people that weren't even in her sphere, they brought people with them. But why does she call them and invite them? Right? None of that Facebook event thing. Oh, I can find a thing. No, you have to call them. So what else? Anything else? I know some agents tell me that the best way they've added to their client base is people they meet when they're holding open houses. Yeah, open houses are huge super now. Super success with that spot. Yeah, well, that's a that's a limiting belief, right? You haven't had success because what are you telling yourself? I haven't had success. <laughs> I go there every time. I try to find people. I've learned how to make sure in the first. <laughs> First 30 seconds, talk to someone. I want to know whether they're already working with another real estate agent. Does everyone know the LP Mama script? Do you want to know it? It's the perfect script for open houses. It's, is this the location you're looking for? Is this the price point you're looking at? 
LP and have, <laughs> sorry, have you been pre-approved? Have you talked to an officer mortgage? Here's what I say. Instead of, are you working with an agent? Have you signed an agreement with any other agent? Because if they don't have a buyer broker agreement, I'm sorry, they don't have an agent. Just like if you don't have a listing agreement, it's not your listing, right? I know Debbie's looking at me. Well, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, this is a round world we live in. No, I know. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, in general, that's a better question to ask. Yeah. You know, because you can follow up with right. them. And people become unhappy with their agents sometimes and if you're following up i'm not talking about being an aggressive i'm not talking about stealing people's clients i'm talking about following up right you know so if you're the one that's following up and their agent leaves town or isn't calling them back because i mean agents don't communicate well and you know then they're going to call you i'm sorry that's the way okay so that got so what's the next one m uh, motivation. motivation. Thank you, Sharon. L P M A M. Oh, 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 and what's the last one? Yeah. So when can we meet? Would Friday work or would Sunday be better? Appointment. Appointment. What is the reason we do anything? To get an appointment. When you call people, are you calling them just for fun or do you want to get an appointment? When you go to an open house, are you going there just to show me things I would do on Sunday? Or do you want to get an appointment? Focus on the purpose of your call. Focus on the purpose of your activity. Does that make sense? I love that. Open houses are back. So what's, then there's another MA. LP Mama? Did you say I mama? did them all. MA, MA? Yeah. Location, price, Motivation. mortgage. Oh, agent, agent, motivation, okay. appointment. Got it. That's the best script ever for open house. And open houses are a real opportunity again. We've had, um, we've had, I don't know how I'm going to say, three, at least three years of being able to get by, by with being really lazy agents. Lazy. Things have been really easy, and we're going to have to work this year, all of us, no matter who you are, right? We, we have listing inventory. We have, we're back to market updates. We're back, we're, now we're not listing a house on Friday and calling the seller on Sunday. They will, we have 15 offers. I'll be over. No, it's, you know, a week's gone by. Here's what's happened in the market. So things are different, and we have to get back to work. And that's what I'm talking about. We have to get back to the basics, which is to look at the results we want and check our mindset, skill set, and activities. And are we following our schedule? And do we have standards and expectations that all align with the results that we are asking ourselves for? Does that make sense? So any questions, comments, let's open it up. How are you feeling? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Are you feeling motivated? What are you feeling? Motivated. Good. What's the first thing you're going to do? Go make some calls. Right. And why are you making the calls? Yes. <laughs> you guys are quick. Yeah, no, really. I mean, this is not a complicated business. It's simple, but it's not easy. Simple and it's not easy, pardon me. But yeah, so that's that's really it. It is a business of script practice, lead generation, lead follow-up, appointment, and negotiating contracts. That's what this business is about. Is who's going to family reunion? Just Morgan. Just Morgan. Just I won't pick on you anymore, Morgan. Sure. Because Morgan takes care of me at family reunion. I do. When is family reunion? <laughs> Next week. No, it's this week. Oh, yeah. it's this week, yeah. I start this week. I think there's like 12 of us. 12 of us? 12. Are going? I think. So it starts, for me, it starts on Friday. Saturday. And for others, it starts on Saturday. 
So I want to tell, I want to um, talk to you about accountability. It would be nice if each of you could have an accountability partner. What's that mean? Someone who helps us, someone who will help me hold me accountable to my plan, my schedule, my calendar. Yeah. So here's what it looks like. So I have um, one, two, I have three teams that report their numbers daily via text to all of them, and they include me on it. So what are they being held accountable to? Each other. Their activities. Do you think they want to put big fat zeros in there? Because then they get me, what the heck is going on? Right, and their their team leaders going. Well, what happened? That's that's the kind of act. That's a kind of accountability that works. So, how granular does that get? Like, I made a hundred calls today. Okay, so let me tell you what uh, my clients track for me every week. I don't know what I did with my thing. Um, so I have them track. They report to me their contacts, and they don't BS me. You know. This isn't about me, it's about them, right? They're not out to please me. They're out to get results for themselves, right? So the contacts are conversation. They also report out opportunities. So if they have, if they uncover four opportunities, that's four people they're adding to their pipeline because they also track their pipeline. Then they are reporting out um, appointments. And they know what an appointment means, a preparing event, right? And then we track buyer and listing agreement sign. So you see what we've done? We've gone from how many contacts does it make, take to get an agreement signed. And I'm talking about a contract. I'm talking about a listing or buyer agent agreement. And yes, you should have buyer agreement sign, no question. Who does? Thank you. Okay. And then they also report, um, uh, they report the, their pendings and things that contracts and where they are with their goal. But these are the numbers that help you. Because what, here's what I was finding, like at the, in the middle of last year when the market changed on a dime. Remember that, July? <laughs> So um, what we were seeing was um, the gap between contacts and appointments. That's a skill set issue. What are they saying? What are you saying, right? So a lot of our teams, we started recording calls to see where their gaps are. And this isn't to be good, bad, or ugly. This is to help, right? And then if you, and then here's the other gap. If you're going on appointments, why aren't the agreements getting signed? Were they real appointments? Or um, were you not asking for the business? Something like, well, I'm not going to ask them. Oh, you're waiting to be invited. That usually doesn't work, <laughs> right? So those are the numbers that we track. So my, <laughs> my teams that text me every day, here's the numbers I get. You know, 18 to zero, zero. I mean, there's four numbers that are, so we all know what those mean. Does that make sense? And there's no reason that all of you can't do that with someone. So, I mean, it has to be someone who, who you care what they think about you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like someone you respect, it can't be like your mother. Oh, honey, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, honey. Um, there's so much. I mean, I could stand up here for 14 hours and keep on, but but this is just the the basis of it's all about results. So I'm going to tell you how coaching works, just so you know, because there's a lot of. So we have productivity coaches in our office. They help people when they're new, and um, when you make. $75,000 in gross commission income, you can enter max coaching um, and breakthrough status. 
And the purpose of breakthrough status is to get you to $150,000 quickly. That's an easy number to double. So once you get $150,000 in gross commission income, then you can become a mastery client at MAPS. And that's when you get all the huge benefits. You know, the family reunion, the masterminds, the mega camp, all the whistles and bells that come, all the free stuff that comes along with that. So if in case you had, I'm not pushing it, I'm just telling you that's how it works. A lot of people are very confused about how it works. So, okay, that's all I got, but I want to ask, answer questions. Hopefully I haven't scared all you to death. I'm not scared. I didn't, you know, you're all alive. You're all well. You're motivated. Yeah. All of this training that you're doing, how do you find time in your day to continue to sell? To work on your own week? You know, that's a good question. Do you guys want to hear? Yes. So <laughs> I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be vulnerable and transparent here. You know, in 2017, I hit a wall. I mean, I don't need any more money. You know, I know how to make money, right? But I hit a wall in 2017. So I wrote a growth plan and um, I, all I put on my growth plan was to go to Austin every month. I didn't know what I was gonna do in Austin every month. And for those of you who don't know, that's where the mothership is, where Gary Keller is. And I was just on a, on a discovery mission because I wasn't fulfilled. I'm selling and buying and sell, selling real estate was not fulfilling for me anymore. And I've gone through all the whys. You know, I've gone through, you know, when I first started out, I, I want to pay my bills. I want a bigger house. You know, I want to get my kids through college, blah, blah, blah. And now we're at legacy. I want to leave a legacy, which is why I own, you know, a dozen houses. You know, that's, they're all going to my kids, right? And then what? Right. And so that's when I really discovered through um, it took a year of really, really heartfelt searching. And I was invited to be a bowl coach. Um, and I realized that I can't do the travel. Cleveland is not a hub to anything. It takes me all day to get to Austin. You know, I can't do that three times a week. I don't want to do that three times a week. So that was gone. And so I just continued and then, um, you know, the head of maps called me and said, you know, your name's really on our radar. We'd like you to consider thinking about being a maps coach. And I'd never really thought about it. And it's a road. Let me tell you, it is a road. There's like a four month tryout and then four months of red shirt, which is at any moment you can get out. You know, and, you know, so in October, I think it was either 18 or 19, I became a full-fledged coach. And that's what fulfills me. So how do I do it? Because everything I do makes me better. Mm -hmm. When I'm helping people get better at, at running a business, and, you know, that's one of the first questions I ask. My schedule's full right now. So when I ask clients who want to come into my schedule, I said, what, what do you do? Do you sell real estate or do you run a business? If they tell me they sell real estate, they're not for me. You run a business, right? So that includes balance sheets. Prop my kid has had a profit and loss statement and, and has tracked his net worth since he was 10 years old, right? And so, you know, we help people run businesses. Why do we have a business? Come on now, why do you run a business? Have a profit! <laughs> profit, right? And you know, people come on my schedule that make, you can't imagine how much money I said, what was your profit? I said, I don't know. What? You don't know? Anyway, so that's how I got into this. So how do I do what I do? Because I'm, I'm, everything I do makes me better. And so then I became a coach. So then I want to become the best possible coach I can be. So then I decided to get all these master practitioner certificates, which took me a long time to do last year, but it all makes me better because mm -hmm. that's what my life is about right now. Just learning, growth, and helping people. Remember my mission? To help people grow their wealth through real estate and coaching. And that's what I do.
Does that answer your question? That yes. was a long answer. Oh, I love the answer. Yes. You have to be you have to be authentic and true to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you are, doors open. Doors open. And so, and, and, you know, one of our coaches, he says, you know, you know, um, hard decisions, easy life, easy decisions, hard life. Hard right. decisions, easy life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll tell you when they invited me to, to be a max coach, I looked at what was ahead of me and I was like, oh, holy shit. I don't know if I really want to do this and it could be for nothing or well, wouldn't be for nothing right I would learn a whole ton but um I don't know if I the office was kind of full the day I got the news that I had because I mean it, you, it goes from like 500 people to two I mean it's insane the numbers you know but I remember the first day I found out that I became a coach I was jumping around this office like a maniac I thought I was insane but it's just an honor and a privilege and to watch people like, you know, I have, am I, I mean, to be honest with you, my, my um, really hyper focus is women because women don't always know how to stand in their greatness. And so that's really one of my major passions is women are raised to be martyrs, not models. And we want to help women be the models. Right? Of course, we take care of people, we have the babies, and we can stand in our own light. And so that's really what I love is, is watching women grow and stand in their greatness. So I also coach men, so I help them stand in their greatness too. Yeah, I'm still doing my push-ups. You're still doing your push-ups? Yep. Who are our, our training, you know, for our yeah, training That's yeah. right, right. Yeah, and, and we, you know, at, at Max, we believe that. Our clients are, you know, resourceful and whole, resourceful, creative, and whole. And so we have to coach to the whole person. You know, there's a whole person, not just numbers. You know, what else is going on? Tell me more. What else? What else? What else? Because if people want to give me, you know, this answer that they think is acceptable, well, this happened. Okay. What else? What else? And then the real problem right? It's just like when you're talking to your sellers or clients. Well, what else? Tell me more about that. What does that mean to you? You know, so it's all, all kind of works together, right? Okay, anything else? Any more questions? Okay, well, thank you for coming today. Right on time. <laughs> Clarity is power. Thank you for coming, everyone. <laughs> Oh, are you are you doing crop um, uh, uh, Oh, pivot. Shut. Well, I do pivot. I do that. Oh, okay. but after that, I do have nine to eleven or two hours, and then a half an hour to sleep. Yeah, she was so following. Yes, and that's where that's yeah, that's really Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is all the yeah. yeah, I see all those people, and I just don't even look at them. And I just make that's sure right. I'm making the ones that I don't want to make because I'm making them. Yeah, I've been really trying. I've been trying to do that. I don't think calls or texts when I want to that I've made. How many contacts have you made over the last six months? So, where's your word for gap? That's what I'm trying to do. Well, you're probably getting there. I don't know. And I'm not going to sell it away. I don't know. 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 Face to face, so nice to meet you. All right. So, so how do you do I sound? Yeah. 
I'm just going to be part of my chambers, my networking, I'm volunteering at them. Um, I am like that's great. doing all sorts of things to that I'm doing now. So I'm doing a lot of that out a lot, which is more than I was the last two years. Last year, right. they're really we're tough on me, but anyhow. Um, so out of 490 calls, whatever. I connected with 263 people. So that was within six weeks. Mm -hmm. so I've got like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sell next year. You know, so you add to your pipeline. Right. But that's further out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but my buyer agent called me. Oh, he's in no rush to, 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 to do anything. And I got another buyer. Uh, she has to follow up with to see where she can get the money from down payment from retirement accounts. And she's taking a long time for doing that. And there's another buyer. Yeah, no one's in a hurry. No, that's what no, I'm saying. They're not, I they're, see the that. news is scaring people. Yeah, it is. It's, it is scaring. And that's why I'm calling too, is just to let them know hey, this is still a good market. I mean, it just depends on where they're going. Right. You know, are they going out of town? Are they staying here? Are they looking at downsides? You know, that kind of thing. But um, I don't know. I said, like, last year, I had a really good year. And it was like 95% of, of my database. But you know what? My database doesn't seem to be growing. So they're not going to buy every year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you were through. And I you know. through. I have people that are 20 years that they've, because I've been in the business for years, they are still in their house. They love it. Do I have, I said, do you, do I have to do such a good job that you love your house? I mean, I do appreciate that they love it. I say, okay, now I'm like going, who do you know? Who do you know? Yeah, who do you Who's know? looking for that? To become an agent. I mean, I'll take anything at this point. Right. Yeah, it's just kind of weird, kind of weird, but it is not a bubble because my husband asked, well, so what is the bubble going to first? It's not, there is no bubble. No, this isn't no. like the last rates year. are so low, you got five, but people don't realize that they don't realize we so low because they are used to seeing twos and threes, mm -hmm. so they feel that it's so high now. It's not high. And I had 18, I had an 80% mortgage on a townhouse way back when. So yeah, these are not low. These are not high, they're low. And, and the people who were who had lower rates, they're not looking to sell. So that's keep the inventory low, yep. which makes it a seller's market, which is more favorable for us too. Right. Because money is moving into the market. Right. I so gotcha. opposed to being a buyer's market in 2008. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah, you would want that. Yeah, it's not going to be a buyer's market. No. So if they want something, they need to do it now because it's going to cost them more every year they wait. Right. And then there's a rates that come down later this year or next year. And hopefully. So who knows? I mean, we don't know. We're just no. guessing. I mean, let's face it. We're guessing. Because at any time, the you know, political force can um, do whatever they want. We may be stuck in the middle of here. <laughs> hopefully not. But I don't know. Don't have a lot of, <laughs> of faith in any of that anymore <laughs> at all. I think we all lost faith. Yeah, I, I sure have. Um, but I'm still doing it. <laughs> I'm doing what I can do. I just have to find the right spot for me. Because really, you got to do a niche. I, I feel you have to be in a niche market where there's not everybody. Right, right. I, I, I'll tell you this. I, my, my sellers last year, I, I later gave a presentation about listings and how, how tough listings were and how he would negotiate his commission. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, I had first time sellers. I mean, I'm going to list an appointment and I, I, I show them, I, I waved the fifty, sixty thousand dollar net sheet in your face. They see they're getting their money, never had to negotiate commission. No, uh, I never did never, either. Never. I have not had to. No, they just like, oh well, they just see the fifty thousand dollars. I mean, it was a legitimate number, and they like pay it. And I, I, I didn't. But when you get the more savvy sellers, they say they don't say, well, the seller's market. I don't want to pay the full seven percent. Yeah. You know, you gotta come back, push back on that. But no, they were just like, yeah. Well, it also depends where I'm at in the year too. I mean, if I'm at 100%, I'm more willing to do something than for people that I've known. I won't right. just do it for right. anyone. Right. Why? Right. You're cutting your own throat. <laughs> right. Right. But, oh well, I guess we all are in the same spot, huh? It'll work out. It'll work out. Yeah, it will. Just like, whoa. Oh, my God. Whoa. This window. Yeah. Terry leaves the room, she leaves the room. I guess they should shut that off. I don't know. <laughs> Why? I don't know if that's still on. What is it? What was it? 
I don't know. She was. She was. <laughs> I don't know if that was. Maybe they'll send us a recording later. <laughs> 